All right, so once we know how to classify triangles, it's pretty straightforward. We need to look at their angle measures, look at their side lengths, and we can basically kind of determine what type of triangle we are working with. Sometimes we can make that a little bit more difficult. For instance, what if we didn't have a triangle at all? What if we had three coordinate points? How do we identify what type of triangle that's going to be? Now, the first thing I always tell students to do is, yeah, just by giving three points, like that's not enough information. What we need to do is we actually need to plot these to go and see what type of triangle it looks like we're dealing with. And then what we'll do is we'll plot the points to sketch the type of triangle where therefore we can kind of make an assumption of what we believe our type of triangle is going to be. And then what we'll do is we'll use some math to verify that the type of triangle that we thought we had is exactly what we did. The first thing I'm gonna do in the example is just go ahead and plot my points. Okay, so now you can see what I did is I just basically plotted the points, right? Using my X and my Y axis, right? Now I just need to kind of make some assumptions looking at my triangle. So looking at the triangle, it looks like I might have an isosceles triangle, right? It looks like these two sides, X, Y, as well as X, E are going to be equal to each other. So it looks like I'm dealing with at least an acute triangle because I have all three acute angles. So therefore, at least we can classify it by angles as a acute triangle triangle. But now as far as the sides, I need to verify that these sides are actually going to be equal to each other. So to do that, we're going to need to know the distance formula. Okay, so remember that's going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Now again, that's just going to be between any two points and we're using the subscripts just because we want to be able to differentiate which point is going to be point one and which one's going to be point two. x1 and y1 relate to the same coordinate point and x2 and y2 relate to the other coordinate point. So just make sure when you're subtracting, you're doing them in the same order. Okay, so I believe that xy is going to be equal to xz. So what I'm going to do is I need to go ahead and verify that using the distance formula. So I want to be able to find what is the length of x, y. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to subtract the y from the x. And again, you could do x from y. It does not really matter, guys. Just make sure you're subtracting x from x, y from y. And again, we're going to go three minus one and one minus five. You got to make sure you go in the same order, either y from x or x from y based on these coordinate points. So that is a huge mistake that students will make is they will like subtract a three from the one and then they'll do a five minus one, right? Or they'll just subtract the X coordinate from the Y coordinate and they'll kind of mix that up. So just make sure you notice this is X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1, the way that I label them. And again, you know, just to, I guess, maybe not um, do any confusion here. This is the way that I did it. Um, that's a Y2. So just so you can at least verify, because sometimes it gets confusing when I'm dealing with X and Y coordinates and then a coordinate point that is X and Y. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So three minus one is going to be two, a two squared is going to be a four. And this is going to be one minus five is a negative four and negative four squared is going to be a 16. So therefore that's going to be the square root of 20. Now we don't need to simplify this. Well, I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to, but again, we're just trying to classify these triangles, right? So let's go and verify now. What about XZ? Now for XZ, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to let X1 and Y1, and then I'll just go ahead and subtract my point. So again, kind of using this formula here, I'll just, you know, you can use this X3, Y3. Again, just, this is just, the subscripts are just a way to differentiate that. So now instead of X2 minus X1, I'll do X three minus X one. And I'll do a Y three minus Y one. It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of being formality there. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. So this is going to be a five minus one quantity squared plus a three minus five quantity squared. Okay. Let's actually go ahead and bring this down now. So a five minus one is going to be a four. Four squared is going to be a 16. And a three minus two is going to be a negative two. Negative two squared is going to be a positive four. So therefore you can see that yes, these are exactly the same length, right? So these are going to be equal to each other. Now, again, you can always like test, like what about YZ? Does YZ look? But again, like unless I have something that's very close or my graphing was really bad, which again, sometimes when you don't have grid paper and like I'd be teaching inside the classroom, I might have to like check that. But this one I think is pretty obvious. This does not look look like YZ is going to be anywhere close to equal in measure of XY or XZ. So therefore, this will be a isosceles triangle. Okay, cool. So now let's get into another example. So another example, same kind of thing. Like, you know, students get confused. Hey, I don't know how to do this. What do I do? Even if you forgot the distance format, even if you forgot how things are labeled, fine. Just at least please just go ahead and sketch the graph. That's the main thing I want you to do is plot these points. 
right? And again, we learned how to do this way before we entered into, you know, geometry class. So let's plot the point for A, B, and C. So I go ahead and plan the points. And again, I recognize that basically looking at my triangle, I know that I wanted, that was not supposed to be six. So that was actually supposed to be a two because I know what type of triangle I was looking to go ahead and create for this problem. And you might say that like, oh, this looks like it's a right triangle, right? But again, we just don't want to assume that it's going to be a right triangle. You might be able to use the idea of these horizontal and vertical lines, but I still want to make sure I show you the math that's going to be able to verify that we indeed have a right triangle. Because again, if this is a right triangle, that means this is a 90 degree angle. And if we have 90 degree angles, remember that means those two legs are going to intersect at perpendicular lines. Meaning if you remember perpendicular, they're going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. So therefore to verify this is a right triangle, we're just going to want to go ahead and check the slopes. Now I don't need to check the slope for A and B, but I am going to want to check the slope for AC and BC. Now in terms of the side lengths, it doesn't look like anything's going to be close. Like again, when you're dealing with a 90 degree angle, like you could have an isosceles triangle, but it doesn't look like these two legs are anywhere close to being the same length. So therefore I'm just going to go ahead and initially state this as a scaling. Now, again, we could do like the last example and verify using the distance formula, but I think we'll be kind of safe to say that we can just label this as a scaling. Okay. So now let's go and verify this is a 90 degree angle, right? Cause again, sometimes you will have triangles that are like orientated and like on a slant and you will want to make sure you can use the math. So remember in the last example, I showed you how to find the distance formula, right? And the distance form was between any two points. And those two points were like X1, Y1 and Y2, X2, Y2. When we're following the slope, we're going to use the same kind of idea. Like to find the slope between any po two points, we're going to find the difference in the Y coordinates over the difference in the X coordinates. So that's basically, again, looking at the difference, knowing that we're having a X1 and Y1. Now, in this case, since I'm going to be using C for both these examples, I'm going to label this as my X1 and my Y1. Now, again, you can like label them any way you really want to. But again, let's just do this one as a X2, Y2. Let's go ahead and find the slope for my line AC. So if I want to find the slope for AC, all I'm simply going to do here is just find the change in my Y coordinates over the change in my X coordinates. So therefore, that's going to be a 2 minus 2 divided by a 4 minus a negative 5. So a big mistake mistake that students will make in this case is they won't use parentheses. Make sure you're putting parentheses around that negative five, because then what you notice is I actually have a double negative. It's a four minus a negative five, which is actually adding, right? So two minus two is going to be zero. So this is zero over nine. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter because zero over nine is just going to be zero. But again, this is a mistake that comes up over and over. All right, now let's go and check the slope for BC. Now again, actually real quick, just to make sure, remember when the slope is zero, that makes sure we verify that we do have a horizontal line. I know you could probably look at these two coordinates and say, hey, the Y coordinate is the same. So it, we are already know it's horizontal, but I'm being a teacher here, guys. I'm still showing you the algebraic way. Like, yes, you could work on that faster. Okay. And again, we could do more and more examples. Let's just try to keep this video relatively shorter than it needs to be. But yes, on this problem, you could definitely verify this as a horizontal line because the Y coordinates are the same, but you can also verify using the slope formula. All right. So to go ahead and do BC, I'm just going to label this as an X3 and a Y3. So therefore, instead of using Y2 and X2, we'll just use uh, Y3 and X3. Either or. So what I have here is a five minus a two all over a four minus four. Okay. And in this case, I get a three over zero, which again is undefined, but it's a very important to understand. Like you might say, well, the slopes are not opposite reciprocals, right? And yes, because zero is neither positive nor negative, but you need to understand something. When you have a zero slope, that's a horizontal line. When you have an undefined slope, that is going to be a vertical line. So yes, we are actually dealing with two lines that are perpendicular. Therefore, since we have perpendicular lines that are legs of the triangle, they are creating a 90 degree angle. And we have a 90 degree angle in a triangle. We can classify that as a right triangle. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the most important thing to remember is to plot your points and then just kind of use some common sense what you believe it's going to look like and then use either the distance formula or the slope formula or maybe a little tricks up your sleeve to be able to classify. Now, if you need more help classifying triangles, in my last video, that's exactly what we kind of reviewed is all the different ways we can classify triangles. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is actually work on a proof to show you why and how the sum of all angles add up to 180 degrees. Now, if you just need more examples on working through geometry realms, go and check out the examples down below or I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.